Oh yeah, it's here. The A10 Mini Extreme ISO all-in-one rack-mounted case build on wheels is finally complete. You might have seen me refer to this build back in an earlier video. I've got a rack mount unit. This is actually like a super top secret thing that we're working on, but uh, hint, hint, if you're a live streamer, if you've got an A10 Mini, we're gonna be building out like a full unit that fits inside a case. So uh, be on the lookout for that in the future. Where we did a little studio tour and it was just a shell, but now it's complete. In this video, I'm going to walk you through why I decided to build this rig, what went into this rig, a full pricing breakdown, and then talk about the usage. So why did I decide to build this rig? I've been on a mission to create a live stream solution that worked for my needs. My needs are portability, efficiency, and to get as many things all in one place. So I'm not making a gigantic mess of cables on my tech table. The opportunity presented itself when my colleague Marty, hey Marty, bought this Gator 6U rack rolling case, only to find out that it was too deep for his needs. He didn't want to return it because the return shipping would cost too much, so I went to the drawing board to figure out if it made sense buying it off of him. So what went into the rig? Honestly, hours of planning and thinking about how the connections needed to flow, what it needed to do, and what needed to go where. It was kind of like that scene in A Beautiful Mind or in The Hangover when Alan is counting cards and all the math shows up on screen. The one thing that I've learned with rack mounted units is no matter how much planning you do, you'll still start putting the thing together and realize that you need to make changes. I determined that this rig needed to include one, the A10 Mini Extreme, two, all of the cable connections so I could protect the ports on the A10 from getting worn out, three, the ability to run video playback using a hyperdeck instead of needing another laptop. This also needed to be triggered by the ATEM. Four, I wanted it to be able to take at least two SDI camera feeds for longer cable runs, and I didn't want to have to bring additional HDMI to SDI adapters, so I hid a couple inside the unit. Five, I wanted it to record program feed and not just straight to a hard drive. I wanted a backup because if anything happened to that hard drive, I'd be Six, it needed to keep everything cool if it was operating outside. Seven, I wanted a screen built in for multi-view and it had to be big. Everything I had seen online showed people building Pelican cases with tiny little seven inch monitors. I may only be 32, but my vision isn't getting any better. Eight, I wanted to be able to plug in just one single power cord. Nine, I wanted multiple program output options from HDMI, to SDI in case I'm sending the feed to TV screens, projectors, etc. And 10, I wanted something that would last, that would keep my gear safe, and could be adjusted at a later date if they decide to release an A10 Mini Extreme ISO Max Thor Lightning Edition. Needless to say, this was a lot of wants. It's a tall order, and I knew at the same time that it was totally possible. So let's dig into the rig. We'll start with a top-down look at each rack unit on the front and then the back. Each side has six rack unit spaces. On the front, we begin with the top rack, and this was the best space for the 1RU pull-out monitor from SeaTech. It's a 17.3 inch monitor that's full HD and has both HDMI and SDI inputs. The SDI has a loop out, so if I ever wanted to send my multi-viewer somewhere else, I could. The second rack unit down is a shelf. I use the AC Infinity vented cantilever 1U universal rack shelf. It's 10 inches deep and it can hold 60 pounds. What you can't see because it's installed is that this shelf is holding an anchor 40 watt five port USB wall charger and the USB charger is powering two Blackmagic bi-directional converters. These were the secret sauce for getting my two SDI cameras into the ATEM. It converts the SDI signal to HDMI, and then I ran HDMI cable inside to the ATEM Mini Extreme on input seven and eight, so I would remember that the two SDI cameras are the ones on the end. I also snuck a little iPhone charging cable in here too, so if I ever wanted to plug in my iPhone, I could do that and rest it on the shelf. Rack unit number three is reserved for two Blackmagic HyperDeck Minis. Okay, hold up one sec. See, when I first recorded this video, I had to convert the signal 
to SDI in order to get it into the Hyperdex. But now the new Hyperdex that Blackmagic just released a day after I recorded this have HDMI inputs. So then I took the converters out of the case and I now have two new Hyperdex Studio HD Pluses inside where I no longer need the SDI HDMI converters. I can just go HDMI directly into them from the ATEM. One is for recording the program or live feed and the other is for video playback. Rack unit number four, it's totally empty. Why? Because we needed room for the ATEM to squeeze inside the case when we slide in the sliding rack shelf on rack unit number five. This is the Ares Vision 350 millimeter deep heavy duty sliding shelf and we simply used T-Rex double sided mounting tape to make sure that it wasn't going anywhere. Finally, underneath the sliding shelf is a Furman Merit Series 8 power conditioner and surge protector. This powers all of our devices except the Hyperdex. Okay, scratch that. The new Hyperdex don't do power over ethernet, sad face, but we have a power cable that we used and plugged it right into our power conditioner. Let's flip it to the back. Rack unit one at the top is just the backside of the pullout monitor. Rack unit two is the AC Infinity cloud plate exhaust airflow fan. Buried inside is a thermometer probe so the fan knows when to kick it into high gear. Rack unit three is a TP-Link gigabit switch with power over ethernet. Then comes our custom patch panel from Redco complete with a USB-C pass-through connection from Switchcraft and Nutri connectors to pass SDI, ethernet, HDMI, and even XLR audio through. Rack number five is empty, so we can have a few cables come through, including our power cable, and rack number six, empty. Now, let's move on to the pricing breakdown. The Gator 6U rolling rack case comes in at $250. I bought this case off of a friend, so your price may vary. From top to bottom, on the front, we have the SeaTech pullout monitor. There was an HDMI only model for $499, but I opted for the SDI model at $599 just to future proof my setup. The AC Infinity vented shelf was $26, and on that shelf is the 40 watt anchor power supply that was also $26, and two Blackmagic bi directional converters that were $69 each with a power supply for a total of $138. Then we have two Hyperdeck Minis that cost $695 each along with the rack mounted shelf to hold them in place. The shelf is $109 so altogether that rack is $1,499. The sliding rack shelf that holds the ATEM came in a two pack for $85 and the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO is $1,295. Just below the sliding shelf is our Furman power conditioner at a price of $89. Now to the back. The AC Infinity cloud plate exhaust airflow fan is $169, but I bought it open box for $122 on eBay. The TP-Link switch is the SG1008MP, and it was $99 at Micro Center on sale for $89. The custom panel from Redco was $206, with the addition of the USB-C feed-through costing another $24. The AC Infinity vented rack panel on the back is only $13, and last but not least, cables. I bought really thin SDI cables from Superbat at $9 a piece, and there's four of them. I bought my HDMI cables from Cable Matters, and they came in two packs, of which I purchased seven at $13 a piece. Any additional cables, like some shorter Ethernet cables, I already had on hand. But if we're trying to get an accurate price, let's just say that there's about another $20 in additional cabling that I may have included. While you can't see it in the video, our firm and power conditioner required three pigtail extensions to get the plugs further away from the outlet when you have larger AC adapters that won't quite fit. This brings the final total to $4,519. Now I realize that some of you might look at that number and think, whoa, I spent $1,300 on an A10 Mini Extreme, and then I'd still have to spend another three large ones just to build a case like this? The truth of the matter is, yes. And this is nothing compared to the $35,000 TriCaster that my colleague rolls around, and when you add all of the bells and whistles, he might have $100,000 worth of gear in a traveling setup. So to be able to build a complete all-in-one, ready-to-go mobile live streaming unit for under five grand is really not that bad. 
It's also worth mentioning that this past summer, our A10 Mini Extreme ISO brought in over $107,000 in income, so it paid for itself 20-fold. Speaking of which, earning numbers like this as a solo videographer really isn't all that far out of reach. In fact, we teach people just like you how they can do this too over in Six Figure Livestreamer. There's a link in the description that will lead you over to our free live stream training where you can learn more about the opportunity to join filmmakers across the globe who have joined our private community and who have learned how to add live streaming as a service for their business. Imagine being able to get paid quicker because there is no editing on the back end. Think about rolling into an event with a case, just like the one that we mentioned in this video, and no longer needing to unload Pelican case after Pelican case because you have a simple solution that works for you. Now, what if you paired up all the knowledge on live streaming that we've included in the course with a powerful sales training that helps you land more clients and build a company that people seek out rather than the other way around? Stop scouring the internet for clients and start building a business that offers live streaming and you'll see just how quickly you can build a successful six-figure income. Again, the link is in the description. So what did you think of our build today? Pretty sweet, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. Do click that subscribe button for me as a quick way to say thanks. And if you really like this training slash walkthrough, can you give me a thumbs up? I'll do my best to list all the gear parts in the description below. See you next time.